Hi everyone, everyone's favourite topic, the balance of payments. Remember what the balance of payments is. It's just a big account, a big spreadsheet that measures the inflows and outflows of money into and out to a country. We're measuring international transactions with the balance of payments here. I'm not going to focus on the current account because I've already done a video on that. If you're not sure of the current account of the balance of payments, then watch my video on it to understand it. Now remember, it consists of the trading goods, trading services, uh, sections which together constitute the trade balance. It also looks at two uh, income parts as well. The primary income balance which is known as the investment income and the transfers balance known as secondary income. Together that gives us our total income balance. So that's all just recap of the current account. You should be aware of all of that. What I'm going to focus on in this video are other parts of the balance of payments. Two other accounts and something known as a balancing tool or the balancing item of the balance of payments. Right. Um, the capital account is another part of the balance of payments, but a very, very small part of it. If you actually look at the balance of payments records for countries, you'll see that there is the current account, which is a big, 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 the most substantial part of the balance of payments, the financial account, which is a very big part as well, and the capital account, which is a much, much smaller part. And it accounts for international transactions that are very minor in nature. And uh, I'm not going to spend much time going through them. You'll never be asked in the exam to explain the capital account and what's actually recorded in it. It's not important. So what is actually measured? Well, debt forgiveness. There's a lot of talk about that in the news uh, at the moment. So if a country's owed lots of debt and they decide to cancel that debt out, well, that will be recorded as a negative. Okay, so debt forgiveness uh, is accounted for in the capital account. So by forgiving debt, that is a debit, essentially. You're not getting money that you should be being owed. Um, so that will be recorded there. Any inheritance taxes that need to be paid internationally will be recorded here. Any international death duties, uh, any transfer of financial assets by migrants coming into or leaving the country um, will be recorded in the capital account. Also sales of tangible assets. So if a company is selling uh, a factory or selling a skyscraper or selling office space abroad, that will be recorded in the financial account and the capital account. And any sales of intangible assets, so non-produced assets, like um, land, for example, uh, will be recorded. So any buying and selling of land internationally will be recorded in the, in the capital account. Any buying and selling of non-financial assets, like copyrights, like patents, will be recorded in the capital account on the balance of payments. So you don't really need to know much about that, just know that it exists. What I'm going to focus very much on the financial account, which is the next biggest part of the balance of payments, beyond the current account. Very, very important. For lots of countries, this is substantial, very significant. Uh, some examples only make you learn two accounts of the balance of payments. They say the current account, obviously, but also they call it just generally the capital account. And that's confusing because the way some examples talk about the capital account being important, actually, what they mean is the financial account. So what I'm doing here is the official balance of payment structure uh, that all countries really adopt. And if you look at the documents, you'll see these different accounts of the balance of payments. So when I talk about the financial account, this is what the IMF agree is the financial account. And what the IMF agree, uh, what the capital account is based on what I've written down here. Don't get confused, okay? If your exam board says you just need to learn two, then they mean that the financial account, what I'm going through here, is the second account you need to learn. So what else is, uh, is measured in the balance of payments? What else is recorded in terms of international transactions? Well, the financial account looks at portfolio investment transactions. Okay, so portfolio investment transactions. And this is just the buying and selling of financial assets. What kind of financial assets? Well, that could be bonds, corporate bonds or government bonds. It could be the buying and selling of shares. And it could be the buying and selling of derivatives, financial market derivatives, like options and swaps, um, financial instruments that tend to be bought and sold by investment bankers and investors. So very simply, let's say we're looking at the UK balance of payments. If uh, you, lots of US firms decide to buy UK government bonds, well that would be an inflow into the UK. That would be money entering the UK in order to buy our government bonds. Uh, that will be recorded as a credit uh, for the UK and recorded in the financial account on the balance of payments in the portfolio investment part of the account. Let's say uh, lots of UK individuals decide to buy US company shares. Well, that's money leaving the UK.
that would be a debit in the uh, financial account of the UK balance of payments measured in the portfolio investment part of the financial account. Um, so any movement of money in and out of a country in terms of the buying and selling of financial assets will be recorded in the portfolio investment part of the financial account. What about uh, another part of the financial account? Well, foreign direct investment. flows are also measured in the financial account. So let's say a German firm decides to set up shop and uh, open up a factory or open up shops in the UK. Well that will be money entering the UK, that will be a credit for the UK measured in the foreign direct investment part of the financial account. Similarly if lots of UK firms decide to shut down in the UK and move elsewhere, move to other countries, well that will be a debit for the UK, that will be an outflow of money uh, measured in the foreign direct investment part of the financial account. And the third thing that's measured in the financial account are reserves. Okay, reserves held either in currency or held in gold. So any changes in our reserves, positive or negative, will be recorded in the financial account of the balance of payments. Right. In terms of theory, knowing now what different transactions are recorded in the different parts of the balance of payments and different accounts, the key thing is to realise how a current account deficit or surplus can actually be maintained in the long run. Because think about what a current account deficit means. If a country has a current account deficit, it means it's buying more from the rest of the world than it's actually selling to the rest of the world. More money is leaving the country through international transactions than it's entering the country. And that's not sustainable. That means as an economy, uh, let's say the UK who has got a large current account deficit, that means that we are owing the rest of the world. That can't be sustained in the long run. Right? That money's got to come from somewhere. We can't buy more from the rest of the world forever. That money's got to come from somewhere. And that money tends to come from surpluses in the financial account and or the capital account. The whole financial kind of uh, spreadsheet here needs to balance. It's not called a balance of payments for nothing. The whole record has to balance. You can't owe the rest of the world more than, uh, than what you're actually selling them. Okay? You need to actually balance the account. So what, what, what often happens here is if a country is experiencing a large current account deficit, then they will often record a financial account surplus which balances the entire account. Let's take two countries. Let's take the USA and let's take China. Now we know that the, that the USA have got a large current account deficit, whereas China have got a large current account surplus. Now we know that a current account deficit can't be sustained in the long run. The financial account here, the financial spreadsheet, the balance of payments has got to balance. And at the moment it's not balanced. There is a large current account deficit. So therefore what needs to happen? The USA needs to have a financial account surplus. And that's exactly what is happening at the moment in the USA. Remember what I said about the capital account, how minor it is. That doesn't really feature very much. So we look at the financial account to balance the overall uh, balance of payments here. How can the USA actually gain a financial account surplus? Well, simply, countries that are running a current account surplus are sitting on lots and lots of excess cash. For countries like China, they're selling more to the rest of the world than they're actually buying from the rest of the world, which means they have massive reserves of cash that, they can, be, that can be used to invest. And where are they going to invest it? They're going to invest it in countries where um, they have a current account deficit, like the USA. They're going to invest it in countries where investments are safe and secure and give a good rate of return. So that might mean buying US government bonds, which will mean that the US get a credit in the financial account, a positive money inflow into the financial account. It might be buying lots of US uh, company shares. It might be buying lots of US financial market derivatives, in which case uh, that props up the financial account for the USA and it leads to a surplus in the financial account. Whereas for China, that's money leaving China right, to buy US government bonds. So that will mean a financial account deficit for China. Both ways, the US balance of payments will be balanced and the China balance of payments will be balanced as well. Where current account surpluses will turn uh, will be uh, overridden by financial account deficits and current account deficits will be overturned and overridden by financial account surpluses. That's what needs to happen for this whole account to balance. 
Maybe it's not the portfolio investment part of the financial account that balances the, the overall spreadsheet here. Maybe it's inflows of foreign direct investment. So the USA, for example, is deemed a very good country to invest, to uh, set up factories, to set up production. So lots of countries like China, lots of Chinese firms, lots of other countries, their firms will come and set up in the USA and provide an inflow of money into the USA, leading to potentially a financial account surplus. So countries that are deemed a very good place to invest in terms of foreign direct investment, like the USA and the UK, can see inflows in that way, leading to a financial account surplus, maybe balancing out a current account deficit in that sense. And just in case uh, the financial account and the capital account together cannot balance out a current account deficit, we have also a net errors and emissions part of the account, where funky accountants get together and they fiddle the numbers to make sure that the overall account does balance, that the overall spreadsheet here sums to zero. It needs to be balanced. We can't owe money to the rest of the world. That money's got to come from somewhere. And if the two accounts here, financial and uh, capital account, together don't come to a surplus that uh, balances out the current account deficit, then the balancing tool will actually make sure that the account sums to zero. All right. So that's the uh, balance of payments in detail, looking at all, all the different sections of the balance of payments. Uh, hopefully now you understand that a current account deficit can't be sustained in the long run. A financial account surplus must be being achieved for the whole uh, structure, for the whole balance of payments to sum to zero. And if it doesn't, you have the net errors and emissions tool. But even for countries that have a current account surplus, um, they would want to invest a lot of that money. They don't just want to sit on the cash. And often they'll run a financial account deficit to ensure that the um, balance of payments sums to zero. The issue with this, though, I'm going to make another video on this, is that countries that run a current account deficit will often finance it by borrowing money by issuing bonds, by issuing shares, which require interest to be paid back on them. And that is borrowing money, and that again, you can argue, is not sustainable in the long term. What really needs to be taken care of is the current account deficit, not just maintaining or increasing it through issuing more debt, but actually finding a way to reduce the current account deficit. We'll look at the consequences of that in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.